still require integrity. And what others believe about you is never as important as what you believe about you. You know, I got a lot of people who believe a lot of things, but what you believe about you is more important than what people believe about you. You need to grow. And the only way you're going to grow is when you listen and when you learn. Whenever I find myself in a place where I'm starting to feel overwhelmed, when I feel maxed out of my capacity, I always take that as a sign. I need to get some new advice, some new guidance. Where I'm going is not where I've been. I'm gaining ground. Come on, somebody. I'm gaining ground. What would your life be like if you decided to become courageous? You know, it takes courage to, to live. Most people go through life not allowing themselves to step out because they don't want to let go. They don't want to be moved. The courage to face life's whirling wind of contradictions. The courage to love yourself. You've gone through the same process and evolved. You can't sit with somebody who's invested 30 years in and be respected as an equal when you got three. There are some things only experience can teach you. And until you pay your dues, don't run with horses when you're tired from walking with men. The brighter the light, the more the heat. The higher God takes you, the more people are going to see you. And sometimes, instead of celebrating you, people will get jealous. Try to pull you down. Don't take the bait. It's a distraction. Keep your face set. Stay focused on your purpose. You got to surround yourself with people who have talents and skills, not just people who love you. I'm glad you love me, but loving me won't bring these fish in. I want to know, can you carry some weight? I'm talking about somebody who can carry the weight when the net is about to break. You are carrying so much weight and so much responsibility that you are at the breaking point. And you can't even tell anybody that you're at the breaking point because you have a Superman complex and you're trying to be there for everybody. But the reality is the weight of what you're doing is breaking your nets. Do you define yourself by your emotions? Do you define yourself by your status? Do you define yourself by your lowest point? Do you define yourself by your highest achievement? All of that is dangerous. Because the moment you start believing that you are what you do or you are what you went through, there's a bleeding on the inside that happens when, you're, when your sense of self-worth flows from what you do and what you go through. You can't become so dependent on people that you're getting your worth and value out of how they treat you. It's easy to become addicted to compliments, addicted to encouragement, addicted to them cheering you on. Now you rely on them to keep you feeling good about yourself, to make you feel approved. Like a drug, if they don't keep you fixed, meet all your expectations, you get discouraged. The problem is you're trying to get from people what only God can give. Your worth, your value doesn't come from another person, it comes from your creator. And if you rely on people, you'll be disappointed. People will let you down. Sometimes people will even turn on you. Discover the meaning of their life until their life is over. Or until somebody very close to them that they love is about to leave them. You don't have to wait for the pain to discover the meaning. It first starts with decision on your part. And may I add, well, you should decide. Why let worry continue to take money out of your pocket and bank account? Why let worry any longer keep you from becoming all you can be? Why let it rob you of better friendships, better family relations, better profits, better results? It's a burden you can get rid of. Why not be rid of those sinking, nagging feelings that all is not going to be well, that you can't do it? that it won't work out for the best. Worry is undue concern that takes up too much of your mental and emotional time. So how will I know when I found the purpose of my life? You decide what it is. You discover it and you decide this is it. Maybe later on I'll refine it. I probably will. But for right now, this is why I'm playing the game of life. This is what it's about. Every day, if I'm just being this way, if I'm just doing these kinds of simple things, then I know I'm on track. I know. There's a reason for my existence. 
And so although you may believe it to be true about you, these doubts and negative thoughts you have, these were not your original thoughts. That's a powerful thing to understand because you weren't born this way. You weren't born doubting. You were born perfect. You were born believing you were going to do something great. You were born believing you were going to do something special with your life. As a baby, I promise you, you had no negative self-talk. You had no negative self-doubt. These are external sources. They're somebody else's thoughts they gave you because of how they felt about themselves. If you're offering words of wisdom to someone in the genuine attempt to help and they treat that with contempt, then shut up because you're demeaning your words by throwing them away. Self-confidence is self-trust. Self-confidence is building a reputation with yourself that you keep your word to you, that you keep the promises you make to you. Somebody with self-confidence has a reputation with themselves that I do the things I say I'm going to do. And so the cool thing is self-confidence is an internal game. You do not need external accolades, external admiration in order to build self-confidence. You don't need any of those external forces. It's all done internally. You control this. And you control this by beginning today to keep the promises you make to yourself. It's not good enough just to keep the promises as you make to yourself. You must acknowledge it when you do it to you to give yourself credit to create confidence and momentum. Passion is the great energizer. You show me a person with passion, I'll show you a person with energy. You show me a person that lacks passion, I'll show you a person that lacks energy. It's a fact. Passion energizes people. So the question is very simple. What are you passionate about? When you wake up in the morning, do you wake up excited or do you just wake up? You see, it's that passion to do something, to be something, to change something, to make a difference. That's where the energy comes from. You can't take that old story into the new identity. One of the things we have to do to create a new identity is to begin to tell a new story. What's your new story? Who are you now? What are you all about now? Where are you going now? What's this new version of you? If you don't know, you can drastically change your income, change your future, change your health, change your marriage, change everything. If you don't know that, some people then go year after year after year not making much change simply because they, they didn't get to the class. And if you just rock along, I'm telling you it's okay. Anybody can live any way they choose, but I'm here to tell all of you that if you wish to, it's possible to make the next three years totally different than the last three. Change that. It's easy to blame the other person, but start taking ownership for where you are. Are you proud of how you have been living your life? Have you explored your natural talents, your gifts, by enthusiastically trying a variety of activities? So we must be like life itself. Respond to the people who deserve it by taking the first step. Even God himself says, if you move toward me, I'll move toward you. That's the condition. Now, learn to work with the people who deserve it, not the people who need it. Now, here's what's the next step. Teach people how to, to deserve your time. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of us have so much talent and abilities, we just put them back on the back burner, just left them aside someplace. Never did anything with them, never brought them out here. What are you sitting on? What gifts are you sitting on? Have you resigned yourself to a life feeling that nothing can be done to change your future or your circumstances? Some people will not accept the new thing God puts in your heart. They're stuck in what was while God is telling you what is. It's new levels. It's greater influence. It's uncommon favor. Don't let the fear of what people are going to think keep you in your box. Your brain literally goes to work on finding the evidence to prove you right. And so that identity, you're constantly reinforcing it. If you believe a certain worth about yourself, that impacts the type of action you're willing to take. So if there's a goal you've got set, it doesn't matter what it is, pick a goal. To the extent that you believe it's consistent with your identity is to the extent that you will make an effort towards it. You don't know how strong you are until you have to be strong. Boy, anybody can have faith when you got a job, your marriage is working, you got money in the bank. Oh, you can have faith then, but faith not tested can't be trusted. Listen to me, listen to me. Desire discovers talent. 
Right. If if your why is deep enough, right? So has something you have a dream, you have something you want to do, and you know it's gonna change your life. So what's what's the why? What's the reason you're doing it? Well, I'm doing this because of my kids. I want to be able to express myself in this universe, right? That's your why. See, the why will take care of the how. So if you don't have the how, don't worry about it. Leap anyway. If you don't produce, you won't be happy. Here's number two, good friends. The greatest support system in the world is good friends. You got to work on that. Spirituality. If you are a believer, here's what you must do. Study, practice, and teach. Whatever is valuable to you, study, practice, and teach. The other thing is acknowledge your fears and then go into action. Anybody who's ever done anything, who's ever taken a chance, doesn't mean that they are not afraid. Courageous does not mean being the absence of fear. I think that being courageous is willing to do it because that's what you feel and you're going to do it anyhow. What is it about you that's different than your friends? I know I can do more than what I'm doing. I can have more. See, that's the difference between people who make it and people who don't make it. You have a power in you to overcome anything that you are confronted with. You trying to convince me or anybody else that you want to get in when you partying all week. What you got the latest iPhone for? Can you technically afford that? See, everything about what you're doing in the movie, moves that you're making is getting in the way of the big picture. You still partying, you still popping bottles with models, you doing the most. You trying to convince everybody around you that you are, but you're not on. It was good enough for my father, and it's good enough for me. This is the man we ought to ask to use the telephone his father used and drive his dad's old car and wear his old clothes and eat his food and live in his house. No, what was good enough for my father is not good enough for me. Everything is changing, and the wise man or woman is the one who takes a yes attitude toward life, who looks for and expects change and improvement in every department of life. And I say to you, you have something special. You have greatness in you. And the road to the life that you want is straight and narrow. Everybody won't see it for you. You got to see it for yourself. And understand and know this, it's straight and narrow. Why? It's lonely at the top. A lot of us, we don't know where to start. That's number one. And number two, we're afraid of taking a leap. Well, what if I leap, fall down, break something? What if I get hurt? You know, I'm saying you're probably going to get hurt. It's possible. You're probably going to get betrayed. It's possible. But you got to take a leap anyway. you got to jump anyway. I'm going to give you a recommendation. Turn your damn TV off most of the time. Turn your phone off a lot, too. So here's the deal. The TV is competing constantly to distract you with stuff that really doesn't matter. Does it really matter what's going on with the Kardashians right now? Don't be so obsessed with them. Be obsessed with your own reality TV program called Your Own Life. I'm going to challenge you to waste no more effort wrestling with other people. Your destiny, your future is not predicated on the decision of someone else. You've wasted too much of your life trying to change other people's mind about you. It doesn't matter what they think about you. God is not going to bless you by their opinion. God is going to bless you by how you see yourself. Just start acting like you're blessed, talking like you're blessed, thinking like you're blessed, dressing like you're blessed. If you will put actions behind your faith, one day you will see that become a reality. You cannot go around thinking that you've reached your limits. You're going to become what you believe. You are fully equipped. It may not have happened in your past, but it can happen in your future. Now, I'm asking you to go get what belongs to you. You are blessed. You are prosperous. Start acting like it, talking like it, dreaming like it. People who have not accepted greatness for themselves, these people don't study, ladies and gentlemen. They don't have time for personal growth and development. They don't have time to work on their minds. People can affect us. Our peers can affect us. Our environment can affect us just working consciously to overcome the poverty consciousness, the feeling constantly of saying you deserve this. There's no need for you to be afraid. It's not too good to be true. It's true because you've earned it. Why do we care so much about people who don't care about us. 
that won't be there in the hard times, that won't be there when you hit rock bottom, that won't be there in your struggle, that never call you and ask you how you're doing, that never calls you and asks you or checks on you to see if you need something. Why do we care about what they think? We all go through disappointments and things that are not fair. It's easy to hold on to the hurts, and think about what they said. We get up in the morning, and it's the first thing that comes to mind. We don't realize how much that's affecting us, draining our energy, limiting our creativity. If you're going to fulfill your destiny, you have to get good at letting things go. See, your unwillingness to forgive another person is like you sipping the poison, waiting on them to die. Forgiveness is for you. You can't drive your car looking in the rearview mirror. You can't. There's a reason why the rearview mirror is this big and the windshield is this big. If you keep looking in the rearview mirror, you're going to keep crashing your car. Have you ever noticed that when your faith is the strongest, you come up under the greatest attack? Because every time the devil senses that you're about to walk into who you be, and he's trying to stop you from doing it, slap somebody and say, just do it. Be great before it's too late. Being in a great house does not make you great. It's one thing to have great parents, but that doesn't make you great. And they said it's possible to be in a great house, but you not be great. So being in a great house does not ensure that you'll become great. How can you keep your mind on what you're trying to do? How can you make the choice of discipline over procrastination? How can you keep an attitude of doing it all and doing it now? How can you stay focused on your ambitions? You can keep your focus on your work or you'll find yourself distracted. Distracted by negative thoughts, distracted by negative people, and pretty soon, depending on the type of people you've associated with, distracted by your doubts within yourself. Even when you face rejection, even when you face failure, you make a decision. I will remain in the grind. I'm not backing down. I'm called to make a difference. Embrace the fact that in order to achieve something big, you've got to get rid of these distractions. You're probably going to have to have some suffering to get there or some sacrifice to get there. And so once you've embraced and decided that this suffering, this sacrifice. So easy. So easy to put things off. So easy to say you're going to do it tomorrow. Well, I want you to reprogram your brain and tell yourself that tomorrow is not a viable option. You do it today. You get it done today. That's what you do. The journey is just the pieces that you have to go through. And you get to choose to enjoy those pieces, to have fun during those pieces, because you know you're going to come out the other end being the person you wanted to be. And you're going to see it before everybody else does. That I can guarantee you. When we go around dwelling on these negative, defeated thoughts, we are sending poison down through our system. We are telling our command center, the mind, this incredible tool God's given us to release defeat, failure, mediocrity. I wish for you that you might develop a growing awareness of the world around you and your possibilities in it. Develop a sense of history and destiny and be grateful for the opportunity that you have to participate in that grand endeavor. Start the daily action of first cleaning up all your current situations. Remember, little achievement lead to confidence that conquers guilt. Then buy up every challenge to reach your goal. You can now handle it. The winter, the spring, the harvest, the inspiration from it all, and the immediate and future progress that will someday give you a view from the top of your goal, your adventure, and your achievement. When you get up in the morning, no matter how you feel, you need to say, I am strong, healthy, energetic. I have discipline and self-control. I look good. I feel good. I think good. I smell good. Some of you, if you would do that, your mind would go tilt, tilt, tilt. It would think, what in the world are they saying? It would send an alert all through your system saying, hang on, guys, we're changing directions. Don't send out any more defeat. This is a new day. Send out health. Send out healing. Send out strength, vitality, victory. You've got to get your command center sending out the right instructions. 
The people that are going to be successful are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. What is it that most people won't do? Here's what they won't do. Learn something new. They're comfortable with what they're doing now. Learn something new. You need to learn how to control your own destiny. Be your own boss. That's what time it is. Most of the time, your challenge is you're not solving it quickly enough. You're not getting totally certain. Certainty is so huge. Flood yourself with certainty. And then most people don't understand. You can obliterate most problems with just massive action. I see people hem and haw and make excuses all the time when challenges arise. And it would have just been solved if you'd have decided you'd have been totally certain and you'd obliterate that problem with some massive action. How great to have a mind to expand and a soul to nourish, to have hands that can feel, a heart that can experience, a soul that can soar, a mind that can inquire and learn, a body that can respond, to know love, sadness, hope, disappointment, accomplishment, failure, thrills, appreciation, wonder, frustration, confidence, courage, impatience, contentment, expectation, fulfillment, beauty, and harmony. To have all this happen to one is one thing. To know it is all happening is much more. What stress really is when a problem comes up is the fear of loss. And what you do is you begin to give this a disempowering meaning and you begin to feel like you're going to lose something. Which is why having a process means so much to me because when I know I have a process to solve a problem, I'm so much less fearful of the loss or the stress that it's going to cause me. When you begin to get these feelings, it's where your focus is going that's causing this stress level to rise in you. And my hallucination for many of you is that when a problem arises, you begin to focus on the problem more than the solution. You begin to magnify your stress level, make a disempowering meaning, which is this fear you're going to lose something. If you're still wounded over a position you lost, you'll go to that new company, defensive, not friendly, you're treating them based on what you've been through, but they had nothing to do with it. It's much more freeing when you learn to let things go. God will be your vindicator. He'll take care of who did you wrong. It's not your job to pay people back. They hurt you once. Don't let them continue to hurt you by holding on to it. It's easy to say, I have a dream. That's easy. You can say that when the enthusiasm is there. You can say that when you have enough money in the bank. But I'm telling you, it's hard to say, I still have a dream. I still have a dream. Can't you say that after your friends turn on you? And after the people that you're doing it for stop believing in you? Discouragement is deadly. It can get you off track. When you have a setback and you get discouraged, you can get set on the shelf. We all get discouraged. It's powerful. Uh, it is universal. It involves everybody. And it is recurring. It doesn't just happen one time in your life. Many of us never, ever discover our greatness because we become sidetracked by secondary activity. We start doing so many things, we just give our time away until we don't have any time for ourselves or any time to do the things that we want to do. I'm saying to you that one day you look around and there goes a year, there goes two years, there goes three years. So if there's something you want to do, do it now. A man's life consists in how he managed time and change. We become what we are as a result of how we use time and how we manage the changes in our lives. Our mind comes as standard equipment at birth and things that are given to us for nothing we place little value on. Things that we pay money for, we value. The paradox is that exactly the reverse is true. Everything that's really worthwhile in life came to us free. Our mind, our body, our hopes, our dreams, our ambitions, our intelligence, all these priceless possessions are free, but the things that cost us money are actually very cheap and can be replaced at any time. Use your power to create 
a new beginning for yourself. Find something that you love. I didn't come here to work for someone else. I came here to live my calling. A job is what you get paid for. A calling is what you're made for. I invested in myself. I couldn't afford to do it, but I couldn't afford not to do it. All disciplines carry through to affect all parts of our lives. If we're disciplined in just one area and lazy in another, guess what? The bad habits in one area of our life will eventually destroy our self-discipline in the areas we've been working on. Discipline is a set of standards which we've selected as a personal code of conduct. Discipline is the mind being trained to control our lives. Discipline is imposing on ourselves the requirements for honoring these standards. The most fatal deterrent to self-confidence is guilt. Not doing all you know how to do to the full extent of your present ability weakens the foundation for confidence. The biggest part of worry comes from the lack of this personal confidence. And lack of confidence comes from two major things. First, no goals or plans. And second, no daily discipline to achieve. So listen to the voices of creative experience. Let nature, experience, wisdom speak to you and teach you. Remember, both opportunity and challenge await action. You can work on micro habits with regards to your conscientiousness, and I think the best micro habits set up some aims for yourself, goals that you actually value. It helps you do a situational analysis of your life more than a psychological analysis, I would say. And so, so the questions are something like, well, you're going to have to put some effort into your life. We become what we think about. Conversely, the man who has no goal, who doesn't know where he's going, and whose thoughts must therefore be thoughts of confusion and anxiety and fear and worry, becomes what he thinks about. And if he thinks about nothing, he becomes nothing. Motivation is its kind of a strange word. We think it means that we're fired up to do something and passionate to make something happen. Because you just can't turn on passion. You can't just turn on the desire to execute a task. Be certain of one thing. Every exaggeration of the truth once detected by others destroys our credibility and makes all that we say and do suspect. The tendency to exaggerate distort or even withhold the truth is an inherent part of all of us. It starts when we're kids and then it continues when we're adults, exaggerating our net worth to impress old friends, exaggerating how close we are to closing a deal to impress the boss. If you make it to the end of this video, I want you to write, I am determined to reach my goals. I am determined to reach my goals.